Good afternoon everybody and a very warm welcome to Mildenhall and District. So my name's Susanna and I live with trains and today is a special, it's the Grand Tour special and it's also going to cover layout updates because as I'm going to go around the layout I might as well show you all the updates that have been going on and then that will just bring everything together. So this promises to be a really, really, really long video and my apologies if it is but hopefully you'll enjoy it and you'll understand why. And What's happened is um, a friend of mine, or a colleague of mine as well at work, called um, Dom, had recently found out about my video, about my layout, I should say, and my videos. And he asked me about, so how does it work? And, you know, what's it? Because I only see bits and pieces of it. And it kind of occurred to me that I haven't actually done a layout tour in an awfully long time. So today's the day. So that's what's going to happen today. We're going to, have to show you a grand tour of the whole layout and explain to you the ins and outs and the thought processes that I go through and how this layout came to be. And I'm also going to show you some of the recent arrivals. I'm not really going to go into them today too much. I'm just going to actually just show them to you. And, and then at a later video, I will kind of then maybe go into them a little bit in more detail. And basically, because otherwise this video would just be too long. So I might as well as part of the update to show you the recent arrivals that have arrived, go through the whole kind of layout and explain to you how Milton Hall and districts came to being, which is probably, um, I was going to say where I should start, but actually maybe I should just start with what I've got in front of me. Um, so... The first thing I should probably say is before we get into that, um, about a couple of videos ago, somebody made a comment about Susanna's Come Build With Me. And some Susanna's Come Build With Me new series is going to be coming very soon. It's probably going to be within the next couple of weeks. You'll start getting videos on it. I won't tell you too much about it, but you, you sort of pretty much know what it is already. Those of you who've been following me, because I've mentioned it on a few occasions. So you'll know what it's going to be about. Um, so just beware that that's going to be um, coming up very soon as a separate as a separate series and um, so therefore you know I've been gearing towards that and I think in my previous videos I've been showing you some of my DMUs and stuff like that and another DMU has arrived and like I said I'm not going to go into them too much I'm literally just going to show you them in the box and just tell you what they are and they were real bargains um, to be honest um, now this one I got off of eBay and this was described as coming from some of these personal collection. It's never been out of the box and it's never really been run. And, and when I got the box and here it is, it's a Derby lightweight, um, uh, and it's got speed whiskers on it and it, it looks absolutely mint. Um, I've actually taken it out and I've run it on DC. I haven't run it on DCC yet cause I haven't got the chips for it cause it needs an eight pin and a six pin. So I need to get a six pin chip. However, um, when I ran it the first time, it ran perfectly fine. And then when I came to do, I was going to do a separate video on this. Um, it turns out that it's got a slight fault to it. So I need to get a spare from Batman um, just to repair it. And basically what it is, is in, just in short, the um, axles, the wheel sets are held together by, um, they're separated by like a, a plastic um tube in the middle and basically the wheel sets just plug into this plastic tube and then it's held in obviously by the bogey unfortunately the plastic had split and so therefore the wheel sets had just basically fallen out and it was obviously the first time i ran it i didn't realize it and the second time it just kind of it derailed and when i checked it turns out that's not the case it's not really a big deal because the um i know you can get them from batman so it's not a problem and also um, this this like this this DM is way too great condition to send back. But like I said, we'll have a little bit more closer look into that at some point. Um, something else that's come up is a um, now I was looking to do a bit more culling, and um, and so I, I was going to take some more stuff over to Terry in in which I did um, to Hampshire Models in Basingstoke. Um, with a view of getting another locomotive that I'd saw. But 
the thing is, um, people do ask me about where I go and how I go about doing it in terms of selling secondhand stuff. And I do usually go to Terry at Hampshire Models, but it isn't always um, sunshine and roses, as they say. Um, unfortunately, on this occasion, I took my stuff there and he just didn't want to give me the money that I was really expecting for it, which I thought was a bit unfortunate. Um, but he actually did me a favour because the loco I was looking to get with him was he was selling it as £167. As it turns out, I managed to find it on Rails of Sheffield and they were doing a massive discount on it, 46% off um, the same exact same locomotive. So I got it for a fraction of the price. So in the end, he actually did me a favour. And this is what it is. This is another Dapol Class 73. And it is amazing. It's so beautiful. It ran so smoothly. I've, like I said, I've tested it on the DC. Um, but it has, I haven't got around to putting the chip in it because I've been off this week, but I've been doing some other work around the place. Um, I've been doing a lot of decorating, so that's taken up a lot of my time. So I haven't really had the chance to really, and I was also trying to get some other bits done on the railway. But here it is. And it's absolutely stunning and beautiful. I'll probably do a video on that at some point in the future. Um, this is basically the same 73 that Rob McCrane's got at Farland Howe. So if you've seen his, his 73, it's basically exactly the same. Um, but it was absolutely wonderful to get it at such a bargain price. Instead of paying £167 for this, I paid just 90 So that's absolutely brilliant. And the DMU, well, DMUs these days are really, really pricey, but I managed to get this for an absolute steal at what just 128 so I'm really, really pleased with that. Um, today, um, I ended up going to Kernos. And the reason why I wanted to go to Kernos is something that's been on my mind for a little while. Is um, Recently, I showed you that I've got a Network Southeast Fumper unit. Um, I wanted it to get a green one. But you can't, I mean, trying to get hold of, of these, these units are just... They're like pulling hen's teeth. Now, I noticed that Kerno were doing bodies for thumpers. And I, um, I, and I didn't expect that because they don't normally do bodies for thumpers. So I did that. So I had a look. And they actually did some green ones, which is what I really wanted. Now, the reason why I wanted the green one is, although I've got a lot of green DMUs for my heritage line, um, this one needed to be in green because that's what runs on the Watercrest line. And that's my local, for those of you who don't know, that's my local preserves railway. And it's only literally five minutes down the road. And um, so I wanted to replicate that. So that's why I wanted to take the um, Network South East body off since I couldn't find a brand new green one. So I just wanted to show you that, here you go, this is the body. Now, I believe, so this should fit on my existing thumper. And I wanted it with the half yellow ends because that's what we have on here on the watercress line. And I've got a photograph and I'll stick it up there and um, so you can see for yourself what it looks like. Um, it's unit 1125. Um, this one is a, a unit 1121. But I'm not going to renumber it or anything like that, but it's just, like I said, it's a representation. And so Kerno's got a shop in Guildford, so don't go thinking I went all the way over to, um, I think it's Red Roof in Cornwall. Um, I didn't go all the way there, they've got a shop in Guildford, so when I phoned them up, I asked them if they could send the bodies over to the Guildford store so I could peruse them before I bought them, just to make sure that they were all, all in order. And so that was, that was the, um, the motor end. And then this one here, is the non-motorized end. And like I said, you can get them, you can get, if, if you've got a thumper unit and you want to swap a body, or maybe you've got a thumper unit at home that's damaged or got, you can get replacement body shells from Kerno. They do this, this green one with the half yellow ends. They also do a full green. And they also do a blue, VR blue, and the Network Southeast. Now, like I said, I've got the two, I've got Network Southeast on there at the moment. Um, 
And I could have, like I said, kept it on the Heritage Line because you can run whatever, but because I wanted to replicate what was on the Watercrest Line, it's one of the reasons why I wanted to swap it. That was particularly important to me that I swapped the body out on that particular unit. Whilst I was there at um, Kernos, I got a little van, and this is one of those Dare Kerno special edition vans. Um, so this is from the this is actually the Kerno model shop design, and it's like really cool. So you can see their logo and everything. So I thought, oh, I can just get that. It's just like a little knickknack, and it's just. I mean, I do like Kernos. I've bought quite a bit from Kernos. I've never really had any issues buying anything from them. So um, yeah, I'm really pleased with that. So those are all the bits to show you. And yeah, oh yeah, yeah, last by no means least, it's it's nothing terribly exciting this one, but it can't all be exciting. But I went to see Paul a little while ago and I got some people from him. Um, the price of people are just really expensive. And so I bought one of these scores, um, a Slater's, Slater's pack, and they're like seated people, these ones. And you get 24 of them, but they're unpainted. As you can see, they're unpainted. But as you can see, I've made a sort of start on painting some of these people. These are all seated people. This is a pack of seated people. You can also get, I think, a pack of mixed and a pack of standing, I think. Um, I specifically wanted seated people because that's what really I needed. And um, and the thing is, you get three discs. I think they're all the same people, um, but then you get three discs. I've got two here, but one I haven't touched. And it was only eight pound. But obviously you're going to have to have the patience and the ut utilities, you know, the, the brushes and the, and, and the tools, and the paints to paint them. But we're getting there slowly. It's a bit arduous, so I do a little bit at a time. But yeah. Right. So now let's get on to the grand layout tour. So this is Mildon Hall and Districts. And in order to understand the concept of how this layout has come to be in, you have to kind of look back at my other previous layouts that I put on here on YouTube. And it's quite important because that reflects what's happened to this layout and how this layout has evolved over time. Because when I had Behringer, and it was very popular, and that was my first ever layout here on YouTube, and it still is on YouTube for those of you who are interested, and that was based on 80s and it was also um, DC. It was DC analog controlled at the time. And it ran in a sort of, it's very similar to this in the sense of it ran around the whole of the flat that I was living in at the time, but there was no return. So it kind of, it was kind of like a glorified end to end, but the, the glorified end to end was quite a long run. It was like, like I say, it started in, one part of the flat and it came into the lounge and as it worked its way around the lounge it kind of skirted the perimeter and then ended up in the kitchen so it was kind of like the precursor of this layout and I quite like that and I remember at the time sort of thinking to myself I really wish it was I could bring it back um, my second layout was um, a layout called Ringwood South and when that came into existence because I had to move from my home in Alton because my landlord wanted his flat back. So I ended up moving to Ringwood South as a temporary measure, fingers crossed it was. And um, so I wanted to still dabble with my railway. So I decided to make an end to end. And it was like about a 12, I think it was about 12 foot by about two foot wide. And that was basically more of a heritage theme. And again, any of you interested in that, just type in Ringwood South and into my channel or Google uh, or into YouTube, sorry, and it will come up with that. And it was like a heritage end to end. And there's a couple of things that um, I really um, liked about that layout. Um, one of them was the fact that, that that layout was my first ever DCC layout. And that came courtesy of my dear friend, Alan, over at Dragon Junction. And um, he reached out to me because um, he saw me having issues with, because it was quite traumatic, leaving my other flat for Baron Joe, and he, and he felt for me, and he reached out to me and offered me a Hornby, very generously, a Hornby Elite, believe it or not. And that was my first foray into D 
DCC. And so that layout, and I'm still friends with him ever since, we've been friends ever since, but that was the first time I really had got to really sort of chat to him. And since then, we, like I said, we chat regularly, virtually every week. Um, and, you know, I've met him at Getz and his family and they're all great, wonderful people. So, um, so yeah, so thank you. To, thanks to him. He, he was the one who brought me into the DCC world. And that introduced me to DCC Sounds because I bought my first DCC Loco. I don't have actually anymore. It was a West Country class, I think it was, Steamer. But the second one I did, and I've still got that, which is the class 20. And so what I loved about that was A, that it was DCC, and then it became DCC Sound with some of the Locos that I purchased. And also, I also enjoyed running the heritage side of things. So I was then offered to come here on a, on a um, more permanent basis. And thankfully, it isn't private tenancy. So this is housing association. So as long as I keep paying my rent, I'm good. So this will hopefully be my permanent home, um, unless I win the lottery and move elsewhere, or unless other circumstances take over my world. So essentially, um, I learned from Berenger that I liked the whole sense of journey and I like the fact that it seemed like you're going somewhere. Um, so that's what I took from there. Um, from my Ringwood South, what I took from that was that I liked running the Green Heritage stuff and that I also enjoyed the DCC side of railway modelling. So when I came here, originally it was, it was called Milden Hall and Volmer. And that was because when I was at when I was at Beringer, I was going to build a container terminal, and the crane was actually a Volmer kit, and I never ever got around to doing it. And so when I first came here, the idea was to put the container terminal here using that crane and calling it Milton Hall Volmer after the kit. And it was a roundy roundy. And many of you will know that that, didn't, that idea didn't last particularly long. Um, I started building the layout in 2018 here in this place, it was when I moved in. So it's between 2018, 19, I think it's more like 2019 I started, because I moved in at, really at the end. So it was really 2019 and I was thinking of doing a roundy roundy and it was an eight by four and I was hoping that would satisfy my needs. And again, it did not satisfy my needs. So all these experiments with various layouts, including this, this new one that I started building here, just allowed me to sort of work out what I really wanted from the layout. And the roundy roundy just didn't work because it was an eight by four. And to me, it just wasn't big enough. I mean, cause I'd get bored. That was the thing I was getting bored. Constantly I was getting bored. You know, Berenger, I kind of got bored in the sense of that I couldn't run the trains in the background, I had to keep going backwards and forwards, although it was a long run, and that was probably my most interesting one. And then again, it's the same with the end to end at Ringwood South. It was all right, but then once I started exploring sound, you couldn't get the full sound because you only could only go so far before you had to come back. And here I had the roundy roundy, but it was only eight by four. So when you stuck a cam truck on it, it's like let's do a cab ride 30 seconds and it was all over and it just and also just watching it just go around in the same circle it just didn't give me that sense of purpose that sense of journey that I was looking for hence why we have this layout in the way it is and now it's time for me to spin you around and start talking to you about the layout itself and show you the various areas So here we are, we start here in the main lounge. Let me just straighten out a bit more. And I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of what we have and then I'll move you in closer. So this is Milden Hall and Districts, not in its entirety, but just the first part in the living area. 
and it just sort of goes round and skirts round the back here. So that's just an overall view of what's in the lounge at the moment. Now, originally, my roundy roundy came round back this curve and went all the way straight across to where the Digitrax um, sort of plug in. Now, I should say that, that this current layout is run by a Digitrax system. It's also connected with an LNWI, which is basically a router that will kind of a separate router, which will allow my phone to connect to um, to, the, to the trains via the Digitrax LNWI and communicate with the trains to run them through my phone. And you can use, if you've got an Apple, you can use Wii Throttle. And if you've got um, an Android, you can use JMRI engine driver, or you can use the controllers provided. So there's quite a few options. Now, like I said, originally it was kind of like a, a rectangle and it used to go straight across there. And there was two reasons why um, I wasn't really satisfied with with that whole kind of rectangle kind of deal. Um, firstly, um, it's like I said earlier, you know, it didn't take very long to get round. And the other sort of issue that I had was, was the reach to get to the back of the layout all the time. So by having this cutout here, it gives me a much better reach all the way around the layout. So that was the reason why I ended up doing it this way. And it also gave me more space in the, in the lounge area. As you can see on the bottom, um, we have this curtain, a curtain that skirts that skirts all the way around most of the layout, um, just to try and um, I wanted because I live here, and I have friends who come in and visit me and family. That come, I wanted to look reasonably tidy and professional, as as I and smart as I could get it. So that's why it has that, and then obviously I wanted to accent the furniture as well, which is why we've got the orange bar stool. Now, I've been inspired a lot by American layouts and a lot of what comes here, you, you, it's, it's, there's a lot of inspiration that's come from American layouts, including, like I said, the, um, the skirting, the way that it's presented and the way that it's been cut out and designed. Um, even the name Mildenhall um, was actually given is actually from an American Air Force base um, in this country. However, um, it, at the time when I created Milton Hall, that wasn't really in the forefront of my mind. It was just a friend of mine was working at Milton Hall and I liked the name of it and I just put it to one side and I, I said, when I next build a layout, I'll call it Milton Hall. And that's how the name came about. It wasn't actually to do with the fact that it was an American Air Force base or anything or that it had an American influence. So here in front of you, um, again, there's, no, there's kind of like an American influence here in terms of um, a lot of Americans, they run freight and mainly freight and they like to have various different industries and stuff like that. So it was important on this layout for me and also because I get bored that it, from my point of view, I just wanted options. And so if I wanted to do um, passenger traffic, I can. If I wanted to do... Um, freight I could and I'd have like various stations and various industries and so I could accommodate this various um, aspects of what I wanted on my layout so if I wanted to just run passenger services it wasn't just going to run around the track with no station it, you had stations to stop out and, and signals to stop out um, and if you wanted to run freight also to have various industries where the freight could go to and also have options to switch um, and swap out cars and wagons and sorry, Americans call it cars. I, we call it wagons and I guess I've been watching quite a lot of YouTube. So I sort of refer to them as cars. Um, so I've got various areas that I wanted to incorporate. So if I fancied sort of playing in a certain area, I could sort of do that. And so in, in, although this is one big layout, I can actually condense it and sort of playing various and split it down to smaller layouts and playing various areas. So here we have in front of you, and um, this is the wagon works scratch built. Um, that's the engine shed over there, which is also scratch built. 
the engine shed here, the DMU shed, is also um, scratch built. That's probably my worst building on the layout um, in terms of its build quality, but I love the look of it. Um, I might rebuild it, but in the same way as I rebuilt these. So it would look exactly the same as that, but it'd be rebuilt in card rather than this foam board, which seems to have warped and bulged, which is why I don't like it. But for now, it's it's great and it's exactly what I wanted. And it's based on Farnham um, Depot. Um, and then as you can see, this is my small amount of DMUs that I've got knocking about here. Um, if we just have a quick little look, see of what's going on here. Um, this is all Southwest trains, the layout's based in modern image, modern era. And it's based sort of in the Southwestern region, sort of, I don't know. It's like I said, it's just a fictitious layout. It's not based on any specific, but I just like Southwest Trains. It's my local train company, or was, until SWR took over. So we've got the MPV, the 158, which is a new Batman one. We've got the old 159 Batman, which is that one there. We've got the free set, which is over there, and the two 450 EMUs. And then we've got, like I said, the MPV at the front, and we've got a one of the depots, 73s, right at the very front. And at the back, you can probably sneak the test train. That's also a Dapple 73 with some fantastic sound on that. And then if we have a little look-see, let me just draw you in a bit closer. So from this angle, um, we've got the wagon works here. And then what you can do is a train can come in here, drop some wagons off along here or along there. And basically run around the train, go off. And then the little shunter, which is right at the top of the screen, which I don't know if you can see, um, just up there, that will then come and pick up these wagons and then shunt them into the wagon works. And then when they when it's ready, then you can shunt it back out and ready for collection. So that was a kind of like a little operations that you can do here. Also, like I said, you've got this Milton Hall Riverside Station, which has just been recently completed. It's not 100% complete yet. It still needs some work. Um, but when it's 95% there. And then this line here is going to be the new line for the Susanna's Come Build With Me, which is the Heritage Line. And that is totally independent, and that will go into platform number one, which is on that far corner closest to the back scene there. So, And that can run totally independent because the point is actually back here, so it won't actually interfere with the main line because the main line is here. So you can run that independently when it gets built. So this is the other, the other side of it. And I'm quite happy. It works pretty well. Milden Hall Riverside Station is nearly done. It's got, it's got everything it needs now. Um, it's had some people added to it. It's had some signage added to it. Um, it's had some destination boards added to it. So I will be doing a cab ride video on it um, at some point shortly. So it's really, really, really taken shape. And then you've got the canopies which run and it's like I said, it's all lit up and I have some lighting switches down here and all these controls, all the lights. And um, I should also point out that there's no point motors on this layout at all. Um, it's all done by hand. And the back scene is by ID back scenes and I can't remember what it's called, but it's ID back scenes. Um, and then recently, I've just done this little corner here. Um, let's just zoom you into that little corner. I've only done this a few days ago. Um, that's just to create, because the station building is down this end, so I wanted to add the bus stop here. And I, I wanted to create an exit point over in this corner here, which kind of disguises the corner of the board a bit. And so I, this was the best way that I could come up with, and I think it works pretty well. And as you can see here, You've got the Arctic lorry that sort of goes behind these containers, which kind of makes it out like the exit is somewhere somewhere else obscured. And I think that works pretty well. And then we start moving on to the container yard. So we'll just move you further down for the container yard. Bear with me a minute. So, so just before we go to the container yard, I just thought I'd show you this. This is the Digitrack system that I use. And I've also got some UT6s. Fabulous little units, love running trains with this little unit. So simple to use, easy to use, love it. 
Um, and like I said, you can use your phone if you're that way inclined um, and just log into the um, log into the router to run the trains. And you, if you've got JMRI or Weave Throttle, you can use that to um, run your trains through here. So as you can see in, in that corner, I think it looks really, really convincing. I think it looks a lot more convincing than what I've anything I've had in that corner. I was never really satisfied with that corner. So I'm really, really pleased with that. And um, that's worked out quite, but I do need some more containers, believe it or not. I need another couple of packs because I've had to pinch a few from that corner there to put it over there in, in that far corner just to see what the look's going to be like, to see whether it would work. And now I'm pleased with it. I just want to get some another couple of packs of containers just to um, cover that off. And then here you go, you've got the container area, the container yard. Um, I think I counted, I think there's about just about 90 containers overall on this layout. And um, so you've got the container siding just over there. And you've got a couple of um, couple of reach stackers over there. And then over here, we've got my two um, fabulous, fabulous um, custom made um, also um, container stackers. I can't remember what they're called now. Um, but the one on the right, number 12, that's my latest one that was made for me. And this came courtesy of my dear friend, Michael Lawrence. And if you're watching, Michael, I hope that you're well. Um, and it looks absolutely amazing. And just for the record, the two lorries which are underneath, he actually did for me also. And there's also a third one, which is the one over in that far corner, which is that pink one. He also repainted that one as well. So he re repainted and built me a... Um, Oh, um, what's it? A scale for it. And he did the same with this, this Freightliner one. I'll get you in closer, see, and I'll take move the reach stack out of the way just so you can see the work. So this, this Freightliner in, a, in its original colour scheme was kind of like the, um, the start of it all. Um, Warren Lane layout was a massive inspiration to me for this layout and I always wanted a container terminal and all the rest of it and originally I had it over on the far side but now it's over here because of the length of the track for the container tray and he had a um and Warren Lane was an exhibition layout and there was actually a freight liner lorry like this not with the same tractor unit but with another one I think it was an MAN or something, or a Merc, I think it was actually. And it was in this yellow and green colour scheme of the old Freightliners, and I asked about it, and he kindly, kindly, this was the first one that he did for me, and he even put a driver on it, it's even got a Welsh flag in it. And it was every time I, I went to exhibitions and Warren Lane was there, I'd spend ages just looking at the layout because I thought it was absolutely brilliant. You can search it on YouTube. Absolutely wonderful layout. Um, this is the um, one of the one of the reach. Let me just zoom this out a bit so you can see it. This is one of the reach stackers. I think it's I can't remember what it's called now. It's really bugging me. Anyway, but again, it was custom made, handmade, and absolutely brilliant. Loved them to bits, and I've got a load of containers here. And then here we have um, it's the main line running across here. And then where this forcep is currently sitting is a um, it's just a siding. And then there's also some abandoned track work directly in front of it. I don't know if you can really see it. I don't think you can really. But if I just sort of take you like that, you sort of see it. This one, this line here is just abandoned here. And it was also currently used as my um my programming track this corner um has had numerous changes throughout the years um because originally like i said along this part of the layout it, it, there was various guys as we sort of had a lot of maintenance area sidings and uh, we also had the train depot here until i decided to move the container 
And I also had a, a return loop on this corner, but it took up so much space, I decided to get rid of that. And that's when I decided to extend it further, which is why we have at this part, we have Chaston Road Station. So this is the first stop, which is Chaston Road Station. And um, it's kind of named, it, well, it isn't kind of named, it is named after my dear friend, um, Dave Chaston. Um, also known as Rail, and he's come here on numerous occasions to help me um, run the layout. And we've had some great times. And that's kind of what I enjoyed. That was the whole point of when I built this layout. What I wanted out of it is to have other people to come here, help run it, because it's always more enjoyable when you've got other people to come and help you. So, Dave, if you're watching, um, feel free to contact me and... Um, have another play really so let's just have another look so it's an island platform just two two platforms and then it goes into this tunnel mouth just over here the tunnel mouth exits here and we have a number of links to link this layout to complete the layout and as you can see this is one of them like I said, there's nothing here at the moment, but that's just to allow me, obviously. And all it is, is just like a plug and play using the quick release. You just plug it into there, plug it into the other side. That makes all the connections and we are all done. So here we come to Goswell Sidings. And I should point out to you that every single piece of furniture that you see has all been custom made by myself. And... I've used some proprietary um, pieces, like these These are like Argos bookcases, which I've just kind of put together and stuff like that, and then hooked them together. And so I built a lap, bought a top, created a top for it and strengthened it and all the rest of it. But essentially, they are custom pieces that I've made. So this is Goswell Sidings. Um, it's one of my favorite parts of the layout, actually. I really do like this part of the layout. It's really, really smart and nice. At the moment, you can see that I've got a number of DMUs. So there's my Fumper in the Network Southeast, but I've got the two green bodies for it. So that will be replaced at some point with the green bodies. Um, the 101 Green is relatively new release. Um, oh, sorry, new arrival with sound. Um, this is also a relatively new arrival. Um, this is a Hornby um, Railroad free car unit. Class 110, and like I said, well worth the money, um, even if it is a bit basic. And then that 121 is actually my network rail one that I got, railroad one, and that already was DCC ready, but I managed to find an old Lima um, 121 body, well, actually, complete loco, and I just swapped the bodies out. And then you've got a signal box here, and lighting is fully lit up. As you come down here, and I actually, this is what you see when you're coming through the front door. This is what what sort of greets you as you're coming through the front door. And this was based on the old sidings in Derbyshire. Um, I I just liked it. Um, like I said, it's nowhere an exact copy, but the likeness and the feel of it was based on on the old sidings in Derbyshire. And then you have got the bridge here which then leads to that, which is our drop down section. And I'll drop that down afterwards so you can see, but I just wanted to show you what it's like without the layout set up. Um, so you can see that this is just one big drop down section. So as we move to this sort of um, bedroom area, well, it is my bedroom. Um, again, all the units are custom built. So if you just sort of take a quick sort of pan around, you can sort of see how that kind of works. All custom built. Um, you got, this is the area I've been working on recently, which is St. Anne's. And you've got the road bridge. And you've got, so when the trains come in, they come into the fiddle yard. And so... It runs around the back and runs, and then after when it comes back out, 
it comes back out over that far side and then returns and comes back into the layout that way. So as you can see, got some DMUs over there and a 37. And then this is a diorama that I built um, for my bus garage. It's also got lighting and I wanted to reuse it. And the only place I could really fit it was here. And also it made quite a nice view is that when the trains came through the bridge, um, you can actually see that it's just, it looks like it's more finished with the kind of foot, the, the bridge edging on the Pico edging on the end there. Um, so like I said, um, this is mainly a company called London United that runs here. There's a couple of buses here and stuff that shouldn't really be here, but they just parked up here because obviously I've been doing a lot of work around um, here in um, St. Anne Station, which we'll get to shortly. Um, so then the, the full yard runs around the back here. And if you just show you this as well, I've got this as well, which is my sort of destination board rail, uh, bus one. Um, like I said, I used to drive this route many years ago. It's my first ever route that I ever drove in service. And it's also lit up so you can light it at night. Anyway, back to here. You can see that the fill yard comes along here. Like so. And then as it exits, it exits from here and does the return loop. And it comes back round here. That little building was a scratch build that I did based on my Batman one. That was a freebie kit that I ended up making myself out of my odds and ends. So just before we go back to St. Anne's, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, Arclo Quarry, which is just over here. I don't know why this is a bit kind of wonky. But there you go. There's, the, there's a quarry there. Um, now, one of the recent additions I've added is this shelf on the top. I've now added this shelf is brand new. Um, again, with some shelving that I had left over, some wood that I've left over, and basically painted it up, made it look nice, make it, made it look presentable. And, oh, sorry about that. I'm just kicking the tripod. And there's two tracks. One's a DC, one's a DCC. And it's basically just a maintenance area for me to be able to test trains that maybe are faulty or just need some work or improvements on it. So I decided to have a dedicated area just for me just to be able to do some testing and, and fixing if I needed to. So I can test to see whether it's a chip problem or whether it runs on D. It's like when you buy a brand new locomotive, before you take the body off, you want to check to make sure it works first. Before you go for all that aggro, so you can just put it on the DC track and then it's, and it's that kind of thing. And like I said, you've got the two tracks underneath and that's for the Arclo quarry and basically you'd back that in with a 66 or so here um danny from south line 709 um either junction i should say um he did a video yesterday and he got a, a his oxford diecast mystery mystery box so here you go here's an idea for you with the vintage car rally which i've got going on here and also i've got a vintage bus here as well so to go to that rally as well. And then that basically joins back onto the main line over there. Here is a Dapol signal. And I had, and the reason why I mentioned this Dapol signal is because I actually had another one to put at St. Anne's. Unfortunately, when I went to install it, it fell to bits. So I'm having to return it. So unfortunately, I can't add that one onto the layout right now. So it's a bit of a shame, but hopefully I'll get another one soon enough. It then kind of goes out onto the single main line. You've got the village kind of up the top. You've got the sort of like an abandoned warehouse. Forget the Sainsbury's lorry. In fact, I'll get rid of that now. It was there because I was doing some work elsewhere and I needed somewhere to put it. So I just dumped it there for the minute. So, um, so yeah, you can see, and there's also like some sort of barn find over there in the corner. Like there's a little car sort of hiding under there. So, um, yeah, and then there's a few other abandoned bits and pieces. Um, the Nissan hut was made with a hot chocolate tin cut in half and then sort of paper wrapped it. So that, that was just like a freebie 
thing that didn't cost me anything so as we go around so bear with me a minute so as we come round, you've got a side in here and then that goes towards St. Anne's Station. And again, there's some more vehicles which shouldn't be there. So let me just move those out of the way. So recently, this is St. Anne's Station, which is where most of the work has taken place. And um, you can see how much more of an improvement it is to what it was. Um, I'm really, really pleased with the way that this has turned out. It's come out really, really, really well. So here you go. This is what I've recently been up to. So this is St. Anne's Station. And again, this station was named after a dear friend of mine. Um, a few years ago, I had a tumour um, and had it removed. And she was there for me to help me out with that. And she took me to the hospital and dropped me off there. And it was really nice to have her um, keep me company and... Be really, be really just generous and help helping me through that tough time. So I named the station after her. That's why it's called St Anne's. And um, this is how it currently looks at the moment. And again, it's got platform signage and signage in general, destination boards, people. It's all fully lit up at night. Um, the actual signal was going to go where this left-hand signal is currently. Um, and it was to cover these two and that one there is a spare one that I was using for Goswell Park Station but I just put it there just to sort of see whether or not I was going to get two separate signals or whether I was going to get another sort of one that I had and then you've got the road bridge on the right there now for those of you wondering what those things are on the road bridge um, they're matchsticks that have just been glued in and if you're wondering what the point is of those it's basically to sort of have vehicles to be able to be on, on inclines without them rolling down the incline. So there you go. So that kind of looks like that. And that's where some of these vehicles were. So you can have them like that. And so, and it's perfectly strong and sturdy. And so if you want to do that, you can do that. But there you go. And you don't, once it's on, you don't see the matchsticks. Because some people do glue their vehicles, but then if you glue the vehicles and you end up damaging tyres and wheels and stuff, and then you can't get them off. And then, so this is a nice, easy way where you can sort of um, put your vehicles and you can put and you can swap the vehicles out as well because they're not glued in. Um, also, this section isn't actually glued in either. So, um, so you can lift this up from when I was doing some work. So there you go. There's a little tip for you for those of you who want to put vehicles on the inclines. So on this bit, I'm just going to quickly drop down the, um, the drop down section to show you Goswell Park. And I just want to show you how quick and easy it is to do it. And there you go. So that wasn't too shabby, was it? So here is Goswell Park Station. I should probably um, bear with me a minute. So there you go. So this is Goswell Park Station. Now it doesn't look like much, but in order to set it up, it really doesn't, as you can see, it doesn't take very long. Um, I've just put this L shape here. And there you go. That kind of gives it a back scene and then you add the little building to it and then all of a sudden it sort of comes to life so that's my other little branch line station and that just connects in through here and all i've had to do is just drop that down now before back in the old days when I was doing these links, it was very, very problematic because I was literally having to carry it, physically carry a link and also to, to drop it in. And it's quite big and cumbersome and, and quite heavy. But now this one is just on a hinge and it just stays put. And 
it doesn't take very long to set up at all, as you can see. So this concludes the end of today's video and the ground layout tour. Um, if you want to ask any questions, please feel free to do so. Um, I haven't actually done the lighting at night and I haven't actually put all the um, links up, but that's just purely because in a couple of days or so, or in the next video, I'll be showing you a cab ride video of the latest improvements around the layout. And then that will give you a complete picture of what it's like from track side and track level. So until the next time, like I said, I hope you've enjoyed the video. My name's Susanna and I definitely live with trains. Bye bye.